Okay, so today we're going to be talking about magnets. Um, I think most people are familiar with magnets, maybe not the underlying principles per se, but we've had contact with them. We see them every day from those magnets that we use on the refrigerator to hold up our works of art to maybe those magnets that we've seen in on TV shows that pick up cars and move them in junkyards. But with something so prevalent in our lives, we might ask where the magnets come from or what are they really? So today we'll be exploring these questions. First, um, what are they? What are magnets? Where do they come from? And what are the different types? Okay, so first, what are magnets? So magnets are any object capable of producing a magnetic field. Okay, so what does that really mean? It seems pretty vague. Well, all magnets have two poles. Uh, here we have a north pole and here we have our south pole. And these poles are opposite to one another, and as the common phrase goes, opposites attract. So the north pole emits a magnetic field. Here we have the magnetic field lines in kind of that minty color, and I'm just going over it in red. So the north pole emits a magnetic field line that's a continuous line all the way around the magnet until it reaches here in the south pole. These lines that I've drawn here on this magnet um, are what give magnets their special properties. Um, and with respect to magnetism, we've already said that opposites attract, but it's also worth mentioning that likes repel each other. So you've probably felt this before if you've ever tried to put two ends of two different magnets together and, and you felt some pushback, that is due to the repelling magnetic fields from those identical poles. So now that we have a better understanding of, um, I guess, what magnets are, we should ask, where do they come from? Um, and that brings us to our first type of magnet, which is the ferromagnet. So ferromagnets, um, ferro comes from the Latin word or Latin root ferrum, which means iron, which is convenient considering uh, Fe is the atomic symbol for iron in the periodic table. Um, and to be able to, I guess, um, identify where these, these magnets come from, I've drawn here just three um, little boxes that we'll use to identify three different pieces of iron. Um, so say I have this piece of iron here, um, and drawn within this, I have a bunch of little domains. And here we have our domains. And domains are characterized by having their own little magnetic dipole. Or in other words, that there is a north and a south to each one of these pieces. So these conflicting dipoles or moments does not give this piece of iron in particular um, any magnetic properties um, whatsoever. But it does allow it to at least be attracted to other magnets. Um, but as we begin to heat up this piece of iron, here I have my, my little flame, um, and start to work the metal. If we do this in the presence of a magnetic field or current, so we maybe run a current I through this piece of metal. Sorry, I'm going to change from red so that it's a little bit easier to see. So we're running this in the presence of a magnetic field or a current. These domains, here we had a lot of domains, uh, here and here and everywhere. These domains start to combine, and maybe those two domains combine into just this domain, or um, maybe these domains over here combine to form this domain. And as we continue to do this, this becomes a process in which we align all the domains um, and induce just one dipole in this piece of iron. Um, and 
the temperature that is needed to, I guess, um, eliminate these these domains and consolidate them to produce a common magnetic field is known as the Curie temperature, which in the case of iron happens to be around 770 degrees Celsius or about 1043 approximately Kelvin, if you're into that. Um, and so the same process that we've gone from a bunch of dipoles to or domains to a few domains to eventually just this one common domain um, is equally valid in the reverse process. So I'm going to draw a little arrows going back in that if we heat uh, this iron and continue to work it, we can eventually eliminate these um, this common domain and that's said to demagnetize these uh, these pieces of iron. So how do ferromagnets um, compare with our other type of magnets, which are electromagnets, which we have here? Um, so ferromagnets are found in nature, and we can induce a magnetic field in them, as we just discussed. Uh, this ability to then produce a magnetic field makes ferromagnets uh, what we call permanent magnets. And these ferromagnets will keep their permanent magnetic um, field uh, as long as those domains are aligned. But what was discovered um, is that the source of all magnetism really is current. And I'm going to write that down uh, just because it's so important, such a crucial concept to understanding magnetism, that current is the source of all magnetism. Sorry, I write a little slow. Perfect. And it was theorized that you could run a current through a wire in this coil that we have here, this lovely coil, um, and induce a magnetic field. So if you run a current around and around these coils, here we have our current, which is I, um, around this, all these currents, um, you can induce a magnetic field, I'm going to erase this, that goes around like this. And these magnetic field lines that I've just drawn may look similar to what I've drawn up here. And really, it, it is the same. Um, and while permanent magnets have more or less this uh, set amount of magnetic properties to them or, or strength of their magnetic attraction, electromagnets uh, are really just dependent on how much current you can run through the resistance of the wires and the voltage. So really it's a function of electricity than it is magnetism. So you can get some really, really strong powerful electromagnets just by running a current through a low resistance wire. So here is just kind of an overview, if I can kind of zoom out on my screen, um, of magnets. Just really simple. Uh, magnets are any object capable of producing a magnetic field. There are two types of magnets, first ferromagnets and second electromagnets. Um, and these ferromagnets are also known as permanent magnets. But the core principle or key takeaway from today's mini lesson is this, that the source of all magnetism is current. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Thank you.